Hi, I'm Don Dawson. Today we're going to take the wheel, put ourselves into drive, and get on the road to safety. Most of us travel the roads every day, in cars, vans, or trucks, driving to and from work, heading out on sales calls, making deliveries, or providing service to our customers. As part of the daily grind, driving may seem routine, but the roads can be very dangerous. Each year, accidents claim almost 40,000 lives and cause more than 2 million serious injuries. In fact, motor vehicle crashes are the number one cause of death on the job. This may make the driver's seat the most dangerous place you've ever been. Fortunately, most accidents can be prevented if you approach driving with a proper attitude, good driving skills, and a well-maintained vehicle. Remember, safe driving starts before you even get behind the wheel. You should always inspect your vehicle before you hit the road. Make sure you have enough air in your tires. Are your tire treads worn down? Grab a penny and insert it head first. If you can see the top of Abe Lincoln's head, it's time for some new tires. If you do a lot of wet weather driving where additional tread can make a major difference, use a quarter and George Washington's head instead. All vehicles should have basic emergency equipment on board. Check for a spare tire, tire iron, jack, accident warning indicators, jumper cables, and a flashlight. You need to adjust the vehicle to suit your body, not just for comfort, but for safety as well. Position the seat so your back has good support, and your feet can easily reach the pedals. Then adjust your rear and side view mirrors to minimize blind spots. These are the areas around the vehicle that you can't see without turning your head. Always wear your seatbelt. A crash at 30 miles per hour without a seatbelt is like falling off a three-story building. Having a seatbelt on will double your chances of surviving. If you're driving a vehicle that you aren't used to, take some time to become familiar with it. Go for a spin around a parking lot. Check your blind spots. Try out the steering. Bigger cars and vans make wider turns. Test the brakes. See how much room you'll need to stop at various speeds. Larger vehicles with heavier loads will need more stopping distance. You also need to be mentally prepared to operate a motor vehicle. Fatigue and frustration are major causes of accidents. Never start out on a trip if you aren't wide awake and alert. If you get tired while driving, take a break to rest and regroup. More than half of all fatal accidents involve drugs or alcohol. As little as one drink can slow your reflexes and impair your judgment. And even legal drugs can impact your reaction time. So don't drive under the influence of drugs or alcohol. Now that we're ready to hit the road, let's buckle up and get things moving. This should go without saying, but you need to obey speed limits and traffic signs at all times. They're posted for a reason. The faster you go, the less time you have to react, and the more space you need to stop. This reduced reaction time and increased stopping distance is a dangerous combination. A crash at 78 miles per hour is twice as violent as one at 55. When you're in traffic, create a safety cushion around your vehicle. This means leaving enough space to maneuver in an emergency. First, look at your following distance. Watch the car ahead of you. When it passes a landmark like a tree or telephone pole, count how many seconds it takes to reach that same point. If it's less than four seconds, slow down and back off. You're too close. Remember, if you're driving a larger, heavier vehicle, you'll need more room to stop. So adjust your following distance accordingly. 
Here's a helpful tip. Watch for brake lights several cars ahead of you. This will give you an early warning and allow you to brake sooner. Many fender benders can be avoided this way. You also need to leave plenty of side space. Try to stay in the center of your lane and give passing traffic plenty of leeway. To be completely safe, you have to pay attention to the traffic behind you as well. So glance at your mirrors regularly to keep tabs on other vehicles. If someone is tailgating you, slowly reduce your speed and let them pass. You don't want to be rear-ended if you need to make a sudden stop. Traffic signs and the lines on the road indicate when it's legal to pass other vehicles. But it's not just the law, it's a matter of safety too. If the lines are solid, you can't see far enough ahead to spot oncoming traffic. So if the sign says, do not pass, then do not pass. When you are going to pass, remember to look before you leap. Check the road ahead and behind to make sure there's space. Signal your intention to pass before you begin to pull out. Pass quickly. Don't lag in the other driver's blind spot. If you can't see the driver in their mirror, then they can't see you. Don't cut off the vehicle you're passing by jumping back into their lane too soon. Wait until you can see both headlights in your rearview mirror, then signal and change lanes. Driving around other cars can be pretty straightforward, but sometimes there are larger problems that you have to be aware of. Sharing the road with trucks and buses ups the stakes. They're longer, wider, and heavier than you are. Tractor trailers can weigh up to 80,000 pounds. That's 40 times as much as a subcompact car. Never follow a truck or bus too closely. That will make it difficult to see around them, and you won't have enough warning if there's trouble ahead. Adjust your following distance so you have more time to react. Because trucks and buses are longer, you'll need more open road to pass them. And because they're wider, you need to make sure to stay far over in your lane when you do. Watch out for buffeting. Large vehicles can create strong wind currents that can push you off course. Trucks and buses also have bigger blind spots than cars. You don't want to ride beside them for any longer than necessary. So when you pass them, you want to do it as quickly as possible and never cut off a truck or a bus. They need a lot more stopping distance than you do. At 50 miles per hour, a loaded tractor trailer needs at least 300 feet, the length of a football field to come to a complete stop. If you encounter a school bus, there are several things to remember. On a two lane road, if the bus is stopped with its red lights flashing, you must stop as well, whether you are behind the bus, approaching it from the front, or on an intersecting road. On three or four lane roads, state laws vary, but most states require that traffic in all directions still stop, unless there is a median or guardrail dividing the highway, in which case oncoming traffic can keep going. Once you are stopped, you must wait until the bus's flashing lights go off and any swing arms are retracted before you can start moving again. When you're driving behind a school bus, it's always smart to allow some additional stopping distance. School buses make stops at locations you might not normally expect, such as railroad crossings and in front of students' houses. And when you are stopped behind a school bus, allow a little extra room in case students or their parents will be crossing the road. Oversized vehicles aren't the only things that can create special driving conditions. Let's look at some other situations that can cause us to adjust our driving. Even though there are fewer vehicles on the road, more than half of all accidents happen at night. When the sun starts to go down, turn on your headlights. At dusk, this makes it easier for other drivers to see you. At night, use your high beams as much as possible. You can see farther with them on, which gives you more time to react to any trouble ahead. 
Only switch to low beams when you're behind other vehicles, facing oncoming traffic, or driving in snow or fog. You'll want to slow down at night as well, so you don't overdrive your headlights. Even with your high beams, you can only see so far in the dark. If you drive too fast, you won't have enough reaction time if you encounter a problem. Adverse weather conditions can dramatically affect how we should drive. Before you venture out into the elements, listen to the radio for road conditions. You may need to allow yourself extra travel time and use roads that are more well-traveled than your normal routes. It's important to be able to see and be seen in bad weather. Maximize your visibility by clearing off your windows, headlights, taillights, and all turn signals. The roads can be slippery and wet in snowy weather, so reduce your speed and increase your following distance. You should also apply your brakes sooner when approaching a stop. Press down slowly and gradually. Slow down before turns and curves, not during. Avoid puddles and icy patches whenever possible. Friction between your tires and the road surface is what normally keeps you on course. It's what helps to propel your vehicle forward and allows you to steer. If you lose this friction, you lose control of your vehicle. Skidding occurs when one or more wheels momentarily lose friction with the road. When this happens, momentum takes over and the vehicle begins to spin. Don't slam on the brakes. This will destroy whatever friction and control you have left. Instead, ease your foot off the gas pedal. Compensate for the spinning motion by steering in the direction of the skid. If the back of the vehicle is skidding to the right, then steer to the right. If the car then skids to the left, steer to the left. Hydroplaning occurs when water lifts your tires completely off the road surface. Remember, when you lose friction, you lose control. Ordinarily, your tire treads channel water out of the way. The faster you go, the more water there is that needs to be channeled. At higher speeds, even small puddles can overpower the treads and cause hydroplaning. Again, do not brake. Ease your foot off the gas pedal. As you slow down, your wheels will reconnect with the road surface, returning control of your vehicle. No matter what the conditions, you need to be 100% focused on your driving. Even in the best of circumstances, there's a lot going on that you have to pay attention to. In recent years, distracted driving has become a major issue for lawmakers, as well as companies whose employees drive while on the job. There are three main types of distractions. Visual, taking your eyes off the road. Manual, taking your hands off the wheel. And cognitive, taking your mind off of what you're doing. Nowadays, there are all too many things that can cause these types of distractions, such as talking on a cell phone, texting, eating or drinking, talking to passengers, particularly children, using a navigation system or reading a map, and changing the radio station, CD, or your playlist. In fact, we routinely do so many of these things that more than 20% of the crashes that result in injuries involve distracted drivers, an increase of more than 50% in the last four years. Cell phones have become such a serious problem that many states have banned the use of handheld phones. Most states ban texting, and nationally, the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration prohibits commercial vehicle drivers from texting wherever they're driving. Many companies are also instituting their own bans on the use of cell phones while on company business. You can combat distracted driving yourself in a number of ways. Set your car radio or preload your CDs or playlists before you start your journey. Make sure everyone is buckled up and that children have everything they need before you leave. Set up your navigation system or mark out your trip on a map ahead of time. Turn off your cell phone while you're on the road. If you're expecting an important call, leave the phone on but don't answer it when it rings. Pull over at the next safe location and check your voicemail. And get off the road to make calls, text or grab a bite to eat. 
Most of all, take your time and be patient. Nothing is so important that you should risk your and others' lives to do it now. In addition to being distracted, people always seem to be in a hurry when they're in their car. Another phenomenon that has become more prominent in recent years is road rage. With the volume of traffic on most roads, getting somewhere quickly can be nearly impossible. This often leads to frustration, sometimes on our part, sometimes on the part of drivers with whom we share the road. Couple this with the aggressive driving styles that more and more people seem to have adopted and too many situations turn into road rage. People yelling at one another, using obscene gestures, and often wielding their vehicles like weapons. We need to know how to deal with road rage on two fronts, within ourselves and on the part of other drivers. It starts with avoiding any aggressive driving on our own. Here are some helpful hints. Plan ahead and allow enough time for delays should they occur. Give your driving your full attention. Don't take your frustrations out on other drivers. Remember that driving isn't a contest. And realize that you can't control the actions of the drivers around you. You can only control the way you react to them. If you are the victim of road rage, there are some other things that you should remember. The other driver could have made an honest mistake, so give them the benefit of the doubt. Don't retaliate. It's not worth risking your life for. And always be polite and courteous even when other drivers aren't. Most importantly, never make eye contact with an angry driver. Often a challenging look from you is all they need to increase their rage. If another driver is harassing you, try to get away from them as quickly as possible. Leave the road you're on and take an alternate route. If they follow you, drive to the nearest police station. Let the officer on duty know what is going on and file a report. Adverse road conditions, distractions, and road rage aren't the only causes of driving emergencies. Let's look at how to handle some other problems on the road. A blowout is a rapid loss of air from a tire. If a tire goes flat while you're driving, the vehicle will be pulled to that side by the tire's increased friction with the road surface. Don't hit the brakes. The vehicle will just pull to the side more violently. Accelerate instead. This will actually give you more control. Keep a firm grip on the wheel and compensate for the pull by steering the other way. When you regain control, slow down and turn on your hazard flashers. Drive slowly to a safe, level area to fix your tire. Accidents can happen to even the safest drivers. If you're involved in one, stay calm and keep your head. Don't move your vehicle unless you're in immediate danger. Turn off the engine and turn on your hazard flashers. Check to see if everyone is okay. Don't move anyone who's injured unless their life is at risk. You could do more harm than good. Never leave the scene of an accident. Call the police or have a passerby go for help. Be ready with your driver's license, vehicle registration, and proof of insurance. They should always be with you when you drive. It's the law in virtually every state. You'll need to exchange this information with the other driver and show it to the police. Get the name, address, and telephone number of anyone who witnessed the accident. Make a note of the responding police officer's name, badge number, and department, and be sure to get a copy of the police report. If the accident happened while you were working or in a company vehicle, report it to your supervisor immediately. Driving can be dangerous, but remember, most accidents can be prevented. Let's review. Familiarize yourself with your vehicle before you drive. Keep your eyes and mind on the road. Always maintain a safety cushion around your vehicle. Pass with care. Use your headlights from dusk to dawn, including the high beams. Proceed with caution in inclement weather. Stay calm. 
Don't take out your frustrations on other drivers. And know what to do in case of an accident or other emergency. Like every other part of your life, driving comes with responsibility. So know what you need to do to drive safely.